hello to you. Happy New Year everyone and welcome to the first episode of 2020 of Playing a Blinder with me, the Creaky Blinder. <laughs> And I thought, what better way to start off a new decade than with a flat earth video. So today, and I only stumbled across this guy this morning because I am the most organized YouTube creator in the world. We are going to take a look at Jesse Johnson. My name is Jesse R. Johnson. Sorry. This is flat earth, globe earth. Flat earth, globe earth, cardboard box. <clears throat> Sorry. Please see my videos on the four levels of logic and the four levels of physics. I actually think I'll give it a miss. And why are we talking like this? Because it's creeping me up. And if I was gonna look for videos about logic, the last place I would look is a flat earth channel, Jesse R. Johnson. This will alert you to more comprehension. There are other views such as spiritual, which is the ultimate highest view of all highest views. I'm starting to get the feeling he may be reading this from a sheet of paper just out of shot. Is he being held hostage by somebody and forced to make this video? Jesse, blink three times if you need help. Present science or scientific materialism is the view of a complex machine. One problem is when humans take the mechanical view to be the only one which describes and explains this world correctly and most in depth. It doesn't. Science is the view of a complex robot android. Spirituality is the view of living beings. Right now, I'm not completely sure what a human is. I think he means anything scientific is discovered by artificial intelligence. I'll speak a little on perception and perspective giving a few points. Perception and perspective, giving a few points. The earth is flat. Well, I'm no expert on the art of speaking on perception and perspective, but just then coming out and saying the earth is flat is more of a statement in my humble opinion. But please, continue. Earth is flat, at least the part we live on. Wait a second. So you actually don't think the entire earth is flat, just the bits we live on. I once considered the earth to be ball shaped. That's what I was taught from childhood, from teachers, TV, magazines, science books, books in general, movies, radio, space organizations, and with everyone else repeating it, etc. Etc. indeed. And that's quite a comprehensive list you have there, Jesse R. Johnson. So what made you change your mind? Was it maybe a bump on the head or some other thing? <laughs> there are those, mainly men, women in general, aren't much concerned about the Earth's shape. Does someone you love believe in the flat Earth? Yeah, this is a bit awkward. I'm not entirely sure that Orphan Red or Mensa Girl, as she's now known, would agree with you on that. Men who argue about the Earth's shape with globe earthers considering their brainwashing modern and considering flat earthers to be backwards. The fact of the matter is... Do you want to think about it and get back to us? No, nobody thinks flat earthers are backwards at all. Why would they? <laughs> the earth is flat. Now, Jesse, you seem like a fairly intelligent guy, apart from the obvious. You think the Earth is flat, but you do realize that just saying the Earth is flat repeatedly doesn't make the Earth flat. Perception gives seeming curved lines. Perspective gives straight lines. Right, well, I'm not sure which dictionary you're using, Jesse, to get your definition of perception. But perception is the ability to see, hear, or become aware of something using your senses. It's got nothing to do with curves. A perspective is the art of being able to see a three-dimensional object on a two-dimensional surface so that you can get the right idea of height, width, depth, etc. Even though you're viewing it in two dimensions. But in fairness, when did a flat earther ever let little things like the actual definition or meaning of words stand in the way of their narrative? <laughs> Silly me. Mechanical per perception is the sense that a when one is standing on a beach watching a ship go away 
One sees the bottom disappear first, then the top last. Then the ship disappears completely. This is called perception limit. No, it isn't. Sorry, but you're wrong. Mechanical perception isn't even a thing, apart from in the minds of flat earthers who would use a term like that to continue to deny what is blatantly obvious. And the reason one sees ships disappear from the bottom up is because of one's acceptance of the natural world that we live in and one's ability to understand simple physics. The reason one sees a ship disappear from the bottom up is because one lives on a globe, you absolute spanner. <laughs> Don't you pucker your lips up at me like that. I'm not that kind of guy. A hug is fine, but that's where I draw the line. <laughs> now, take a powerful zoom lens camera. I think we can all see where this is going, can't we? But, you know, we live in hope. Something people didn't have 1,000 years ago. Good one. I see what you did there, because the P1000 is the Flat Earther's favourite camera. Zoom in on the ship, and the total ship reappears. Perspective gives straight lines, meaning if it if it weren't for the mists, thickness of the Earth's gaseous layers, fog, and the limitations of the camera, then the ship is seeable from California to Hawaii, over 2,400 miles away. <sighs> Why are flat earthers always such a huge disappointment? It doesn't matter how hard I try, I cannot find any flat earther with an original argument. And zooming in on a ship proves absolutely nothing other than the limitations of our own eyesight. Because all you're doing is bringing it back into your line of sight because it hasn't gone over the curve yet. Stay focused on that ship, indefinitely. It'll eventually disappear. But of course, any self-respecting flat earther will just say that that's because it's gone beyond the limitations of the P1000's amazingly good zoom lens. Let's go to B. Or when a jet crosses the sky and disappears, take a telescope and it brings the jet back into view, provided weather conditions are good. There's a perceptual limit to all systems. Whether the eyes, binoculars, cameras, telescopes, etc. But planes fly with the curve of the Earth. So it would be for exactly the same reasons. And whilst you're kind of right that all equipment has its limitations and it can only see so far, again, because, the <laughs> because planes fly with the Earth's curve, then eventually they're going to go out of sight, even for the most advanced viewing. Do you know what I mean? We'll go to C. Perception gives the sky a limited dome shaped a, a limited dome shape above one's head. A, a, a limited dome shape? Does it? Where the sky and ground seem to meet at a horizon. Perspective gives one straight lines and things disappear at a vanishing point. Perception does not perception does not do this. People have trouble telling the difference between perception and perspective. And by people, I'm assuming you mean flat earthers, because perception absolutely does not mean what you are claiming it means. And I find it absolutely hilarious that a flat earther is using a term which is completely irrelevant to try and prove that the earth is flat. Because as I said earlier on, perception is the ability to see or hear or become aware of something using your senses. What has that got to do with the shape of anything, let alone the Earth? And perception is a cognitive ability, it's the ability to understand things. So I find it absolutely hysterical that we've got a flat Earth here trying to use the term perception to prove that the Earth is flat, when all flat Earthers are 100% lacking in the ability to perceive the things that are around them. <laughs> The same happens with the Earth. The further away one moves from the surface of a ball-shaped Earth, 
the more its surface recedes downward, downward. I'm not really sure where you're going with this, but I'm glad you put so much emphasis on the word downward. Otherwise, I would have had no clue what you were talking about. Away from view, one must look downward to see that surface from a 90 degree angle. Now, now I'm really confused. So we've established what downward means. So if we raise ourselves up from a globe Earth, because that's what we live on, we would probably see something like this. And I fail to see how this helps your cause at all. But thanks, I guess. No matter how high one goes, this is the case. Well, yeah, that's exactly what we're saying. A ball is a ball and it doesn't matter whether you're 100 feet above it or 100,000 feet above it. It's still a ball. Even if one goes one mile, five miles, 20 miles, 50 miles, 100 miles or more, etc. from its surface, the further down one must look to see that surface. With a large enough flat, flat surface, the surface stays 50% stays or halfway across, across eye pupil level at all times. Well, why was this? Double flat and double stay. I'm eager to see where you're going with this. No matter how high one goes, depending on the size of the surface, even at 1,000 miles up, the surface of a flat plane would remain at halfway across. across. <laughs> right, I wasn't going to mention it, but can somebody please get this guy a tuba fixer then? <laughs> eye pupil level at 90 degrees to the height line above the surface. While one would have to look constantly downward below a 90 degree angle to the radius line to see a ball earth surface. So what he's saying, I think, is that if the earth was flat and you were a thousand miles above it, you could just see it. You wouldn't have to walk the earth line of sight but <laughs> but because the earth is a globe you have to look down to see it doesn't make any sense at all but why am i so surprised because nothing he's saying is making any sense once again a curved surface recedes downward and you must look down to see the surface as one moves away at all times. A flat surface stays 50% across pupil eye level because of perception and one never looks down to see the surface but straight out at all times at 90 degrees to the height line. Yeah, I thought that's where he was going with it. So if I was to stand on a big table, I would be able to see it without looking down. If I was stood on a giant basketball, I would have to look down to see it. <laughs> okay. Once again, the Earth's surface is flat. One can use airplanes, jets, balloons, or Tesla ships, UFOs, flying saucers that is, to, to find this out and know this. Now, I'm going to move the camera and to show you some simple illustrations. Hold on, please, for a moment. Yeah, fuck, knock yourself out. <laughs> it might have been a bit easier to just pick that piece of paper up and hold it up to the camera, but you know, who am I to criticize somebody? You must look down, down, down to see the curvature of a ball shape. You would have to look downward from the 90 degree line, from that 90 degree line, straight down to see the surface of the earth at any given moment. You'd have to look down, down. So, which way have we got to look? <laughs> That's right, down to see the shape of the earth. <laughs> anyway.
If it's your first time here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on bell notifications. I'm the Creaky Blinder, thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care everyone, bye bye.